For those of you not familiar with the PRI, just a very quick introduction. We represent the responsible investment community with more than 3,000 global signatories to our six principles who collectively represent over 100 trillion US in assets under management. Now the PRI was formed in 2006 out of the UN system by a small but committed group of 86 asset owners, aiming to bring sustainability to capital markets. And in many ways, the history of the PRI is the history of the growth of responsible investment and its move into the mainstream. Progress in those early years, though incredibly important, was also painstakingly slow. However, over the past decade, but particularly in the past five years, we've seen a shift with a significant acceleration in the uptake of ESG investing and both a mainstreaming and a maturing of responsible investment philosophies and practices. While there is clearly still much more to be done, today for the first time, we're beginning to be able to see a widening of our focus and a widening of our thinking on sustainability. The sector is maturing and we're entering what I call responsible investment 2.0 or some might call 3.0. Where investors are really beginning to start shifting their thinking from a pure risk and return standpoint, what do ESG risks mean for my portfolio, to thinking about the investor's role in driving real world outcomes and to thinking about what risk does my portfolio have on the real world, the world in which we all live and the world in which, of course, many members of our pension funds want to retire. And this change in thinking, while subtle for some, requires a different way of approaching and implementing responsible investment. This change in thinking obviously spills over into the corporate world as investors integrate sustainability into their investment processes and the companies that they invest in. So responsible investment, responsible business, business with purpose. And the business of the future will take a much more stakeholder focused approach. These days of business solely focus on maximizing profits for shareholders are gone. It's clear to me that those who don't make this change, who don't embed sustainability in their strategies will be left behind. Now, undoubtedly, this trend was already underway. However, the COVID-19 crisis has really accelerated this progress in a significant way. The world has now woken up and is finally beginning to understand the real importance of sustainability and the interconnectedness of issues that the foundations of a healthy economy at their core must have healthy people and a healthy planet. And markets are responding and they're really beginning to understand this. According to Morningstar in the first half of this year, net inflows into ESG funds in the US reached 21 billion, nearly reaching the total amount for the entirety of last year. The pandemic has served for many as a first real proof point on sustainability, that it's not all about giving up returns for social good. And now in the face of this crisis, the facts are proving the resiliency of sustainable investing. According to BlackRock data, 88% of sustainable indices outperformed their non-sustainable counterparts from the first quarter of this year. And at the PRI, we did a survey of our own signatories and just over half of the respondents indicated that they had engaged with companies on COVID-19 related issues during the past AGM season, while 63% said they had plans to engage with companies on pandemic related issues post the AGM season. It's clear from our survey that investors don't just see these challenges as a flash in the pan issue. Over half of them anticipate that their routine engagements will be affected for the next two to three years. Now, early in the crisis, I kept hearing from many people that they feared ESG issues would fall to the wayside as investors in corporates struggle to stay afloat, focusing their efforts on dealing with the immediate concerns and dealing with crisis management. However, we've seen that investors in 
corporates can, of course, walk and chew gum at the same time. And at the PRI, we've actually never seen our signatories more engaged in ESG issues, and we're witnessing record levels of take up on sustainability strategies. So perhaps if there's one little silver lining in all of this tragedy, it's the significant boost it's given sustainability and the opportunity that it's provided to leverage the crisis to build back better. Taking all of this into account, the state of play in the world and the stage we're at at implementing responsible investment, the PRI is really seeking to further develop and drive home some emerging trends. Some of the emerging trends that we're seeing about sustainability now. So therefore, we've got a number of key components to our next five-year strategy that we want to use to really drive forward some of these trends. And I just want to spend a few minutes talking you through some of them. So the first two tie in very closely together. So namely, they're driving real world outcomes, which I already touched on, which are in line with and help us achieve the sustainable development goals. And as we look to the recovery from COVID-19 and the drive to build back better, I think the SDGs have never really been more important. I like to think of the SDGs as like the world's business plan, the North Star. So to address the recovery to me, we don't need to governments to create more plans. What we need is for them to implement and to fund the one that we have. And this will assist us in addressing the urgent issues that have been further highlighted by COVID-19. Inequality, labour rights, environmental issues, health and social inclusion. So I was really fortunate to be at the UN in New York for the launch of the Sustainable Development Goals. But nearly five years on, our time is really running out to achieve them. UNCTAD estimates the funding required for the SDGs is between five and seven trillion per year. And that's from the private sector alone. Governments, of course, cannot fund the SDGs by themselves nor the COVID-19 response. So against this backdrop of urgency for the private sector, there comes an opportunity. With tens and trillions of dollars in stimulus packages being rolled out, now is the time that we really need to accelerate, accelerate progress against the SDGs. And investors have a key role to play in this. Many investors think about how ESG risks impact their portfolio. But as I said earlier, some are now starting to think in much more detail about how their portfolios impact the real world. And they're adding a third dimension. So it's risk, return, outcomes. At the PRI, we really believe investors' leverage enables them to shape outcomes in the real world, both in terms of increasing positive outcomes, but also importantly, in decreasing negative ones. So to help investors that are seeking to shape outcomes in line with the SDGs, we've recently launched our Investing with SDG Outcomes paper, and it focuses on five steps for investors. We've also launched some work with Freshfields, a global law firm, and it's a new step in our fiduciary duty work. And it focuses on the law and how it either enables or detracts investors from being able to prioritise sustainability outcomes. So how do we maximise positive investment outcomes from a sustainability point of view and minimise negative outcomes? And of course, the law needs to keep up with trends in investing. If we think back five years ago, we didn't have the Paris Agreement. We didn't have the SDGs. But investors are being asked to play their role in meeting the Paris Agreement, in funding the SDGs. But to do this, we need to think differently, but we also need the tools, the data, the regulation and the policy. And really our aim at the PRI is to bring all of these pieces together to take sustainability to the next level. Another area that we're focusing heavily on in our five-year plan is around improving sustainability data. So we are really looking how to drive meaningful data 
and data which better enables responsible investment. Again, this is going on beyond thinking about risk and return data, looking at end-to-end -end data that seeks to measure outcomes as well. And we've recently announced an important new partnership between the PRI and the World Business Council on, to drive joint corporate investor action on sustainable development. And through this partnership, we'll really work on how do we make sure that we get decision useful sustainability data. And we're also going to work on aligning incentives in the market, things such as remuneration. If we um, ask, if we incentivize people to do things on the short term, then that's what they'll do. So we need to change some of the incentives in the market. In addition, at the PRI, we're also aligning our own reporting framework accordingly. So everyone who's a signatory to the PRI has to report on an annual basis, but it's really in the past been all about process and policy. We're adding a plus component, a component where you can think about the outcomes of your investing and how that does impact the real world. Then the other thing we're doing is trying to really elevate social issues, particularly human rights. So in the past, within our signatory base, social issues have often been treated by investors, but by corporates and governments alike. It's a bit of the poor cousin, squeezed between the E and the G. Now, fortunately, I think this is beginning to change. Interest in social issues, particularly human rights, has really grown significantly over the past few years. Institutional investors, of course, have a responsibility to respect human rights, and this is defined in international human rights standards. It was formally and unanimously endorsed by the UN in 2011, and it's been immediately reflected in OECD standards. However, at the PRI, although we have a core group of signatories who are doing this really well and are really engaged on human rights issues, it's not the norm and it doesn't represent the bulk of our signatory base. So we're still really a long way until we see all institutional investors who are really clear and are fulfilling their responsibility on human rights. And so we want to seize the opportunity and momentum that COVID-19 has given us. It's given us a spotlight on human rights. It's given us a spotlight on human rights. And we're trying to really embed them into the work that we're doing. And we're implementing a new five-year plan. We're also starting to um, focus more on the whole issue of stewardship. Last year, we launched our Active Ownership 2.0 program, focusing on how we think stewardship needs to evolve. It's an aspirational standard or an improved stewardship standard, which builds on existing practice and expertise, but it explicitly prioritises the seeking of outcomes over process and activity and common goals and efforts over narrow interests. So something like Climate Action 100 Plus that PRI is involved in is a great example of what I'm talking about. It's focused on environmental issues. It involves 500 investors who represent 47 trillion in assets under management. All of these investors trying to deal with an issue in the same way, with the same us, and it's having fantastic results. So we've recently seen net zero commitments across entire operations from organisations like Shell, BP and Total. And this is all off the back of investors using their leverage and engaging with corporations. But of course, we need to see more than just investors pushing corporates. They also need to commit, commit to net zero targets themselves across their entire portfolio. And with UNEPFI, we recently launched the UN Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance. And we now have 30 asset owners who have made this commitment. And finally, we're also looking about the whole issue of accountability and increasing minimum standards. I mentioned the fact that all signatories to the PRI have to report. We roll out our new reporting framework in January. And that reporting framework, while it will be streamlined, will also mean that it's much more difficult for our signatories to get the highest scores. 
We'll also lift next year our minimum requirements, the minimum requirements that it means to be a signatory to the PRI. So to conclude, ESG and responsible investing are really accelerating, but to make a real impact, we really have to harness this momentum and the recovery from the pandemic to push forward, to push sustainability forward. So over the next three to five years at the PRI, we're going to be working to move to an outcomes focus in line with the SDGs. We want to improve sustainability data. We want to elevate human rights and we want to increase the ambition of investor stewardship. And of course, we want to increase accountability. And I really look forward to working with many of you as we take these issues forward.